All right, this is JPEG to Raw, show number 93, recorded on October 8th, 2013. And tonight we have Chris Todd from Flern. Chris is the CFO of Flern, and he's joined us from the studios. And I, I, you know, I'm not going to get Chris Todd wrong. But I did make sure before the <laughs> before the show that I got uh, the name of the, the company right. Chris, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you guys doing tonight? We're doing great, and I'm so glad you're able to join us, Chris. And we'll go over this in just a minute. And I have a um, a background that's somewhat similar, at least in, you know in the, we started similarly, uh, and that what drew me to him immediately when I was reading his bio and what he did. Uh, Chris, you didn't start off in photography. You you started off uh, where? I started off in business. Yeah, you know, I, I, you know, I, I did photography as a hobby. I didn't even know it was a hobby at, at first when I was doing it. I was just always the kid that had the camera and was taking pictures wherever I went. I never even took it seriously. But uh, yeah, education-wise, I went to school for business. I have a double degree in uh, accounting and finance. I was an internal auditor for three or four years, and nice. now I now I work at Flair. Now I teach photography and, and run this business. So it's it's a little it's a little bit the same. It's a little bit different. It's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and you know, I started off as an internal auditor too when I got out of college. My degree is in accounting, so I didn't get the double major, but I did get the, the accounting. Uh, and I've always said, and I, I think I said this in one of the early emails to you, I've always said that the accounting side of, was what kills the creative side for me. And then you come along and you have both. Like, well, crap. I don't know if I got the creative side. I, all I do here is manage really creative people. So, I mean, I hire creative people. They're the ones coming up with all the great ideas. I just. My only skill would be finding the talent, but they're, they're all the great people. They're coming up with all the all the photo shoot concepts and stuff like that. Yeah. So, how long did you work in the uh, in finance or accounting uh, as an intern auditor? How long did you work as an intern auditor? Um, well, I was pretty lucky. The inter internship I had in college uh, was for the company I ended up getting hired at. So, if you count the year long internship, I was in internal audit for three and a half or four years. Um, okay. So it's really the only job I ever had. I went into accounting. I originally went to school for uh, architecture, and that lasted a whole semester. <laughs> and that was, I was having a lot of fun. I was, I was considering dropping out of college and uh, you know going on sabbatical. I was going to move out to Colorado and be a ski bum for a little bit. But I was honestly just having way too much fun in college, so I decided to stay a little longer. But you have to take classes, obviously, when you're in college. Right. So I, uh, I copied my roommate's schedule, and he happened to be an accounting major, and turns out I was really good at it. And you know, I flew through school. Uh, my junior year, I applied for one internship. It was at a great company, and I ended up getting it. Um, that internship, it was a year-long internship, but two months in, they said they were just waiting for me to graduate. I had a full-time position waiting for me. So I, I really lucked out to being good at my major, then getting a great job without ever really trying to get it. I never actively pursued it. It was just, it's very serendipitous that I wound up in a really beneficial situation for myself. Yeah, but then, I, go ahead. I was going to say, but then after three or four years, you know, you, you don't have that satisfaction of your career. You know, I'm succeeding. I'm doing good at my job, but it's, it's not making me happy. It's not, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to get a promotion. I'm not trying to be my boss. I'm not even trying to move laterally within the company. It's, you know, you're, you're missing that satisfaction and, and, that's that's why I left the, the big big company corporate world pretty much. And you know that's important in any job that you are getting satisfaction out of the job. And if you're not, yeah. you know, accounting is one of those things that if you don't enjoy it, it will drive you nuts. Um, but if you're not getting sat, even if you enjoy it and you're good at it, but you're not getting satisfaction out of it, it's just it you know it's it's good that you were able to find another avenue. So what? Right, what, it's monotonous after a while, and you just you well, dread going even, there. I wasn't even really an accountant. I was you know I was a, you're an internal auditor, right. auditor too. Um, you know, I did about half my job was checking other people's accounting, but the rest of it, it was process improvement. So I was, you know, I worked for a large manufacturing company, so I got to go across the United States. I got to go to China and stuff like that and check our plants out there. Um, it was a really great job for somebody just out of college. I, yeah. I reported directly to the, the board of directors, so I got to, you know, it would be my 23, 24-year-old self in a meeting with a 50-year-old vice president, and I'm somehow the person with all the power, and it's, it's, <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I I did internal audit for about two or three years also. Um, I got you know laid off from my first job when they laid off the entire internal audit staff, and then I went to another company, uh, the one I'm at now, um, and I was internal auditor there for a couple of years, and then I went into the general accounting side, the side that gets audited by the other guy. Um, so, but you know, you know, I'm still doing it. Uh, but what brought you? 
what took you, you know, you went, uh, uh, you came out of that, and how did, did you go straight into uh, Flern, or did you? No, not quite. So I, when I left a, my accounting job of the internal auditing, I, I left to do nothing. I took about two months off and just did absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. um, but at the, you know, for the last couple of years, I'd been buying photography book after photography book. I already owned a DSLR and stuff like that. And I was always trying to improve. I was trying to self-educate myself. I was learning as much as I could to, to learn photography. And then I was just talking with a friend one day, and she was like, why don't you just go to photography school? And I was like, holy crap, that's a profession. <laughs> People do this. So I enrolled in photography school up in Milwaukee. And um, yeah, so I started going to school for that. And then that started it off. Even when I was, when I was in school, I don't know if I ever had actual expectations of being a full-time professional photographer, making my money, making my career from photography. Uh -huh. But I knew it was something that I was passionate about, at least. And I wanted to chase something because I liked it instead of because I was good at it for once. Yeah. What school, what school did you go to in Milwaukee? It was Milwaukee Area Technical College. It's a, it's a really great program. It's a two-year program. Um, you know, they really focus, they get their funding from job placement, so they really focus on preparing you to be a professional, full-time commercial photographer when you graduate. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's a really great program. You learn all the technical skills. Um, they teach you. It's definitely not an art school. It's definitely a technical school. So it's very intense into studio lighting, um, workflow, uh, you know, color uh, reproduction stuff. Like if you're shooting magazines or catalogs, like Boston store department stores and Kohl's department stores mm -hmm. are all based out of Milwaukee. So a lot of the job placement goes to those department stores shooting their catalogs. So that you know, our whole program is almost geared towards that type of work. Wow. I so, actually dropped out of it, though, so I'm not a graduate. <laughs> <laughs> but while you were going there, did, you said you didn't expect to come, to come out and be a professional photographer, or were you still, entertain, well, but, still entertaining that? In hindsight, I don't think I ever expected to be a professional photographer. When I was in school, I definitely had every expectation of making the most out of school and making my living from photography. But uh, I, did good, did, I did really good in school, but I, it... It would have scared the crap out of me to actually be a full-time professional <laughs> photographer. It's not easy. So, you know, the, the way I ended up at Flurn, it's really the best of both worlds. I, it's doing something I love in photography, but I'm using my, my really strong skill set, which is, you know, business and processes and uh, organizing people, organizing this company, and, and really making the most out of it. Because you're the CFO over at Flurn, which if people don't know what CFO is, it's chief financial officer. It's the person right. who's over, you know, uh, if you have accountants, I don't know how big – you guys are, but uh, you're over the accounting, which is accounts payable, payroll, um, you know, all those things, and you're over the, the finances, all the finances related to the company, uh, which, you know, we have talked about in, with a number of professional photographers who are, let's say, sole proprietorships, which is not what you guys are, but, you know, the business side of photography is, in a, I guess, the business side of any business mm -hmm. is incredibly important. You got to have the talent, and you guys have tons of talent. Uh, but you also have to have the talent on the financial side too, and that's where. Well, for for a company like like us, you know, we're we're a very young company. We've only we're two and a half years old. I've only been with the company for about a year and a half, and uh, you know, for the first year we didn't make, but we weren't even trying to make money really. Um, but then everything kept going so good, and uh, you know, we're really in the growth stage, and it's it's a lot of it's a lot more analytics than you would think of analyzing. Oh this type of YouTube post does better than this type of YouTube post. Uh, you know, teaching this works better than this. Um, it's, a, it's a lot of cash flow management, too. Of, you know, let's, let's save on the advertising for this month so we can actually do a photo shoot. You know, for a while it was like, well, should we, should we spend, you know, put an advertisement out on Petapixel or F-Stoppers or something like that, or should we do a photo shoot? Because, you know, our photo shoots are relatively big productions, and, you know, that's, that's a big part of our expenses for a while. So there's it a, it a lot of back and forth. It's like, oh, we really need this new parabolic umbrella, but we can't afford it if we're going to do this photo shoot. You get one of the other. You get the photo shoot or you get the, the modifier. You can't do both. And so, well, if you don't get the modifier, then you can't do the photo shoot. So it's a, it's a lot of planning and, and stuff like that. Which is things that every, you know, any photographer is going to go through. If you're doing oh, a definitely. business, you, you, know, you have to have the gear, but you have to have the, the, you know, the money to buy the gear, and you still probably want to eat. And if you have a family, feed the family yeah. too. <laughs> and you know, we're looking at, yeah, behind you. And you're in your y'all studio. You got you know. In this case, you have to have a studio. Right. Um, so all those expenses, and it's important, very important to 
and have somebody managing those expenses because you know that may not be a talent you may you may be you may be aaron aaron is the the founder uh he may be talented in that area but he may not and i think what they find is even if they are talented in that it may not be the best use of their time yeah the use of the time is a huge thing um you can spin your wheels being decent at some something but somebody can be better at it and you know that's who should be focusing on it uh, you know aaron he founded this company he ran it completely by himself for, from the start for a little while and you know, he, he's a talented photographer and Photoshop artist. He coded our entire website to date. He actually designed the website. You know, he writes all the posts. He, uh, he does a lot of things, but that doesn't mean it's the best use of his time. He should be constantly creating and coming up with content ideas and photo shoots and learning how to teach and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, he writes all the posts? Oh, uh, most of them. Uh, it's, it's a team effort now writing the posts. Uh, okay. for, for the most part, he codes them, you know, gets the formatting right, makes sure our indents are right, and uh, he knows HTML. He, he taught himself HTML for the fourth learn, so uh, he's, he's a pretty talented guy. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so you, you came to Flurn, and why don't you tell us what, what is Flurn? For people who don't know, maybe there's somebody out there listening who doesn't know what Flurn so is. So Flurn, we, we started, we were originally founded under the, under the, the premise of we produce, uh, it's your daily source for photography and Photoshop education. So every single day we produce a video teaching you something about Photoshop or photography. It really started under the blog format of every single day we make a video, we release it. You know, since then we've we still make three or four videos a week. We also have written interviews every week. We have a weekend inspiration that comes out on Friday, which is just a gallery of images from across the internet. Essentially, um, we try to do written articles too. Um, so we're not we come out with many items a week, but we're not exactly your daily source anymore. Okay. Even though sometimes we have three or four things a day, uh, so we really try to teach whatever we find interesting. Um, we, you know, we today we have over 550 episodes, I believe, or something like that. Wow. So we've been repeating content for quite a long time, but that's totally fine because every time you cover something, it's new. I mean, we've taught in Photoshop dodging and burning at least 20 times, but every single time it's a different application. It's slightly different. It's you know, it's it's not always just the technical knowledge. It's learning how to apply it to whatever situation you are currently in and every single lighting situation, every single face is going to need different dodging and burning on it. So yeah. right now we, uh, we do a lot of our, our, we call them family edits, family with a PH, obviously, because we do everything with a PH. Yeah. Um, so we have contests every single week, and our, our users, we get about, you know, three or 400 entries into our weekly contests. But part of submitting into our contest is you allow us to edit your image as an episode on Flurn. So we, we look through all these contest, contest entries, and it's literally just like, oh, that would that'd be something cool. We can brighten the shadows in this, or we can remove the distraction in that background. We can change the color of the eyes, or we, we can just think of something fun to teach that, that is hopefully practical and that is something people come across in, the, in their daily workflow of editing images. Yeah, so I wanted to ask you about uh, something you mentioned earlier is the the um, topics, is that you guys have all these things out there, and you kind of answered it already, but I wanted to go over it again, is, um, you know, you, you've done 20 shows or whatever the number is on dodging and burning. Do y'all ever feel like, wow, we've covered it all, there's nothing left to cover? Or there's, is... There's definitely a point in time when we first started repeating things, we were like, we don't want to do it again, we've already done this episode. Mm -hmm. We've already talk, talked about, like... Uh, Know, focal lengths and perspective distortion and stuff like that. We don't need to cover it again. We've already had an episode on soft boxes. We don't need to cover it again. But after a while, we started repeating them, and after a while, we're like, these are, we taught it totally different. It was a different scenario. Yeah. Um, and our fans, well, some, we listen to our fans. We pay attention to every single comment they write, um, whether it's on our website, on Facebook, on Twitter. We really pay attention, or on YouTube. Um, we pay attention to, to the mood, you know, if people are enjoying it or if they don't like it. And we ask them questions all the time. It's like when we uh, we also release pro tutorials, we call it, which is our, our paid product. It's it's how we make our money, which is uh you know they're more advanced two three or four hour tutorials of, of really in depth start to finish. Here's everything you need to know to to produce something. And when we're coming up with those concepts, if we have two concepts, we'll we'll just flat out ask the audience. Here's one concept. Here's the other concept. Here's what each will be teaching. Which one do you want to see taught? <laughs> Now, how do you have that interaction with the audience? How are y'all interacting and getting the feedback through just? We, ask fans. we use social media quite a bit. Okay. I think we're up to about eighty thousand Facebook fans mm -hmm. or something like that. So if we put anything out there, we usually get a pretty quick response. Um, you know, over the last over the last year, really over the last couple of months, we've been able to get a couple part-time employees that really 
you know, they've taken over our social media and just our overall community engagement of monitoring what people are doing every time there's a question, you know, they bring it up, we discuss it as a team, and then we, we respond to them. We try to respond to absolutely everybody. You know, we get dozens and dozens of emails a day, you know, three or four Facebook messages, you know, 20 YouTube comments, and our discussed comments at the bottom of our posts. Right. We read them all. It's, it's a lot of work. We skim them all, at least. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Yeah, you know, I can see that would be uh, that could be a full time job as big as you guys are getting. That can be a full time job from somebody. And yeah. you know, I, the the comment about uh, doing the same show over again is, you know, I imagine like you said, every time you do a show, even if it's a topic you've covered before, time has passed by and you're going to do it differently, and it's going to be some some new insight, uh, yep. some new way of showing it. You know, we've had. You know, for our show, we're at number, you're number 93, and we've covered a number of wedding photographers. And you would, you would think if, if you're only going to cover a topic once, we'd only have one wedding photographer. But everyone we have on the show is different. Completely different. Completely different. So we may be covering a similar topic, but it's always different. And that's, you know, looking at y'all's work, uh, you know, it was kind of a question where I was saying that. But I, the answer I was thinking is, uh, even if it is the same topic, you never run out of material because it's just things are changing. There's always new ideas and there's always n new way of presenting it. And we're a growing company too, and you're a, a growing, uh, you know, a, a growing podcast. Oh, podcast yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, so you always have new audience. I mean, even if you are repeating it, the chances, you know, maybe only half of your audience actually saw the first part of it. You know, saw when you taught it the first time. Yeah, that's a great that's a great point because most people are not going to go all the way back in the archives. They're going to yeah. look at the newer stuff. We and have problems going back in our archives and finding <laughs> the right episodes. Or if I the user go back and find stuff, it's, yeah, it, it's hard. And we try to organize it. We're actually working through a little website redesign to, to make it much easier to, to search for stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, looking at the photos on your site, um, there's uh, one, uh, you know, you guys, I was showing a little bit earlier some of the site as we were talking to, okay. the, to the chat. Uh, and we'll have links to all this stuff on, in our show notes. But there are just, uh, obviously there have been photoshopped and they're just incredible. I'm looking at one right now that is a guy with his tongue sticking out of his mouth. And maybe I should show that so people in chat know what I'm talking about. A guy with his tongue sticking out of his mouth. And as it comes out, it turns like almost into a frog with two hands, one hand pulling his eye down and one in his nose. That was actually a contest submission. That's not even one. Of, we can't even take credit for that. That oh. was one of our, our fans submitted that for a contest. Um, that is incredible. Yeah, and we've been paying attention. We've been running these contests for quite a while now, and the entries are getting so incredible. Like it, it, it's, we feel like we're actually teaching people because our our contest submissions are just getting so good, and we we really can't believe how good people are getting. And hopefully, because they they watch us, but even if they're not watching us, everybody's getting really talented at, at what they're doing. Well, obviously, I don't know what this person did, but that's what I thought when I looked at it, is this is one of y'all's because, you know, it looks a lot like what y'all have done. So it's if they didn't learn from you, I don't know, but it looks like to me they did, that they've learned from you. Yeah, that's a good that one. is a scary-looking picture. <laughs> you, I mean, it says for itself why I was a contest winner. It's an incredible image. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah there's so, uh, so many great tutorials on here, and... You, there's a lot of them that are free. You have a lot that are free um, that you can go to, but you have, well, you mentioned earlier, the pro tutorials, uh, pro actions, and oh. which are what? Photoshop actions. Do you have Lightroom actions also? Oh, Lightroom, actually, Lightroom presets? We're actually pretty bad at Lightroom over here. <laughs> but we don't, I mean, we're, we, we focus so heavily on Photoshop that everything in that Lightroom does, we actually, we do it, we just do it in Photoshop, okay. and we can do it faster in Photoshop. And the PH stood for Photoshop, right? Photoshop and photography. When okay. the, when the company really started, we tried. Uh, I think the first like five or ten episodes, which are really funny to watch, by the way. Um, <laughs> we're we're teaching like aperture and camera settings and stuff like that. So you know, the basis of the company was to teach photography and Photoshop. As we evolved, uh, Aaron's skill set is obviously heavy manipulation and heavy Photoshop. So we've gotten really good at teaching Photoshop, and in in our future goals, um, we're still learning how to teach photography. It's it's very hard of. We're going through all these different formats of, you know, do we want, do we want to be on set and have the the photographer turn and talk to the cameras? Should it all just be B-roll and then we do like a voice overlay over it? Is that the best way to teach? Um, you know, we've been going through all these different formats of how to actually teach photography, and we think we're getting pretty close. So coming up here in the future, we're really going to start making a push back into teaching the the photography part, not just the Photoshop part. Okay. Do y'all do any of this live, or is all of it recorded? It's all recorded right now. Okay. We're getting kind of close to set up for live, but it's we need the right scenario to do it. We need yeah. the right uh, group of people. You know, if we have 
if we have the right person in town, we, we get, we're lucky to have a lot of photographers coming to town and we get to do interviews and stuff like that with them. So if we have the right person in town to do an interview, maybe we'll, we'll work on a broadcasting live and doing a Q and a or something like that. Yeah. So, um, if someone wants to get started and, you know, come to your, your, your site, what would you recommend that, you know, they get started a new photographer, you know, I look at some of these, these shots that I don't know who did them, Aaron or somebody else did them or, or even a submissions to your, uh, contest and they're just, all fantastic so but if I'm a new person uh, that may be a little overwhelming to me is there somewhere yeah I'm actually gonna pull up the site so I can spend and a I can point to it there. too and you know obviously you can grow uh, you can you have uh, stuff here that yeah, I can start off with the beginner but I can also there's a lot that I can grow with yeah and, and, totally. keep go and keep going like I said, we're—I forgot our exact number. I think we're at 550 or like 555 or something like that for uh, for episodes for you know tutorials we've released for free. Um, so if you scroll down just slightly below the the slider, we have these categories. Mm -hmm. And if you hover over them, like for photography, we have behind the scenes, we have lighting, we have pre-production, uh, production, uh, camera tutorials, and if you go to Photoshop, we have things like enhancing, retouching, styling, tools, and compositing. And those are all for free episodes. So if you if you're focusing on something, you can just go hover over those, uh, you know, click on what you want to focus on, and and it'll bring up dozens of episodes. Hopefully they're titled pretty good, and you'll be able to find what you're looking for. Uh, yeah, there's you can spend hours on on your site just watching yeah. this stuff. And we have a search bar. It's kind of hidden. I don't. I might change it kind of soon. Way up on top, there's a little blue mm -hmm. uh, magnifying. Little the little blue icon I'm, I'm showing it I don't know how if people can see it up here but upper right hand corner when you move your mouse over it the little search bar comes up yeah and then you type in anything in it that uh, if it has that text anywhere in one of our posts you know it'll pop up so you can really find it that's what I use all the time if, when I have to answer emails I'm like do you guys, you guys have any episodes on this and I was like well I mean <laughs> I have no idea let me see yeah I mean that's a, that's a problem that uh, everybody faces as you get more and more content how to organize it so people can find it and you know search is one of the best ways but yeah. you know you can't have everything on one page. It would just be overwhelming. So, you know, organizing is always a struggle. I was looking at your your page, the about page, and we'll get to the photo of you in just a second, which was fantastic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> over one is that way. Well, one million people watch Flurn. So over seventy four hundred uh, free minutes uh, of video. Yeah, that's um, actually out of date quite a bit. I think we updated that about eight months ago. Um, yeah, and, and yeah, so I mean that's impressive right there. That's just yeah. So incredible. it's seven hundred, seventy-four hundred, three 7,400 minutes of video plus eight months worth of video, however, <laughs> however many minutes that is. <laughs> Here, you know, one thing I would I would love to see, and I'm not going to put you on the spot, so you don't have to answer this. But I'd love to see like the photo below it, where it's got the guy uh, eating a, a sub and the ape eating a sub. Yep, yep. Almost would love to see like have a link to how this was done, because that there's so many shots on here. I look at it, just wow, that is incredible. Uh, how, how did they do that? That um, um, that's you, a funny. It's a good image because that's actually how I met Aaron the first time and really got involved in the company. Um, I'm just going to do a quick search because I think we actually do have a tutorial on that. Okay. And I'm pulling up the Chris of the picture of Chris right now. So a long time ago, or not a long time ago, uh, three or four years ago, how I first met Aaron was Aaron was teaching uh, through. Through webinar and stuff like that, he was just doing. He was teaching Photoshop to you know five or ten people at a time. It'd be like a six month or a six week course once once a week, and he would he would go through images, uh, his images. He'd give you the source files and stuff like that, and then he'd walk you through how he how he did his manipulations, and that is one of the images that we went through in class. So that image is actually the sitting on the couch with the the gorilla or whatever it is, is from before Flurn actually started. Okay. But that is something that he did use to teach. And the picture that whoops, hold on, everybody. The picture that I uh, that I have up of you that's on the the team site. I think right. there's there's a video on how that was done. Yeah, there's a couple. It was the Martin Schroeder effect, which um, it got picked up by some other websites, and the the internet was pretty mean about it, actually. Really. What was their well, criticism? It's all, it's all wording. It's a great picture. I love it, but it's uh, um, what was the criticism of the shot? Oh, it's it was all the wording. It was people when you say inspired by something, the internet doesn't understand that. They think you're trying to copy something. Okay. So we this was an image inspired by Martin Schuller, um, and 
we put up an example of what our inspiration was in the post uh, with, with the video. And a lot of the comments were, well, you missed the depth of field, uh, your facial expression's wrong, your lighting isn't quite perfect, and they really didn't under, is two or three hundred comments of how we didn't exactly duplicate our inspiration image. Yeah. It's just like, that's what inspiration is. We're not trying to duplicate it. We're, we're using it as our inspiration. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah this is it. not a clone. Yeah, we're not trying to copy it exactly. We're trying to put our own spin on, you know. Well, I thought it was fantastic because it also went over uh, – you know how to do touch up on a guy, the one I yeah. was the one I was watching, which is often you know we all look at how to do touch up on females, and you know because on a guy you don't want to get rid of if you do too much to the stubble, and I didn't watch the whole right. thing, sorry, uh, it's gonna it's gonna look funny, you know so you know there's a different technique uh, to doing touch up on a guy than there is to a, a female. Yeah, I even know a lot of people that they actually burn in stubble, like you know they'll they'll make it a little darker, They're, they'll enhance the stubble, they'll yeah. they'll enhance the part. So I think I'll do, a, uh, in the show notes, I will do a, a link directly to that video. There's a lot of them out there. You guys have a YouTube channel also with a lot of stuff out there, too. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, a lot of videos on your actual site for people to go and look at. Now, if I want to um, start watching the, the pro stuff, if I want to, you know, move beyond the free stuff, I want to get into the pro stuff. What am I, what am I getting in the pro stuff? The pro stuff is it's way more advanced. Um, I mean, just if you just browse the images, it's everything you need from the source images. We supply the source images in all our advanced tutorials, so you get those images, and then it's every single step from beginning to end to make those images. Um, we don't edit our pro tutorials, uh, video-wise. We don't edit edit them, so it's the really cool part about our tutorials, and we hear this from our, our fans all the time. Is you, you hear our thought process too. It's not it's not a technical. It's not a recipe of how to do these. Mm -hmm. You know, we have millions of mistakes in each of our uh, in each of the tutorials. We'll go through some and be like, oh, I didn't really like that. Let's do it again this way. Oh, I didn't really like that. Let's do it this way. Oh, that's the winner. Now let's move on. So it's it's really the whole decision making process as much as it is the the technical how to. And you know, and that's the realistic way. Who who edits their photos and goes through all these things without yeah. ever going? Well, let me step back a step. I mean, right. you, you, who, uh, you know, maybe there are some people, but I don't, if you're doing any kind of involved edit, you're not going to get it every step of the way exactly right. So that's awesome to see that, you know, hey, Aaron or whoever else was doing it didn't make 100 steps and every one of them was perfect. No, I mean, all, all I'm going to say, there's been, there's been very few times where we've actually, I think it's only happened twice, where we've actually stopped like a half hour in and it's like, no, let's start over. Yeah. Obviously, that's if you go too far down the road, you got to come back, but. Yeah. Uh, so somebody. usually it's you know it's the entire process. It's um, you know whatever whatever happens in making the image. Uh, we do a rough edit before before we start recording. So you know he has he's already gone through it all once, so he knows more or less what he's going to do. But you know he doesn't spend the time. You can't spend that much time perfecting it if you're just going to do it again to teach it. Um, so yeah, all the all the thought process, and that's that's a big part about what Flurin's trying to accomplish is it's the application. It's not just providing the knowledge; it's the application of knowledge and. You know, using your own mind, making your own decisions. You know, it's, we're not a preset. We're not teaching presets or anything like that. It's, it's you know, analyzing what your image needs to to be slightly improved, and then here's five different techniques that could do that for you. Pick the best one. Yeah, I've been scrolling through the um, the pro the pro side the um, the pro tutorials, and it's, there's a ton of them over here, and they're all reasonable price. Now, what what am I getting with? Is this, a, this is a video, of course, and you said I get the source files, too. For all of them, you get a video. The videos are between two and, I think, some are even over four hours long. Wow. Um, you get the source files. Depending on the t tutorial, you get textures and stuff like that, too. Um, depending on the t tutorial, you get brushes. If, if, if Aaron makes a custom brush during the tutorial, you get the custom brush when you download it. It's, it's whatever he uses in that tutorial. So if he only uses the source images in Photoshop, uh, then you get the video and the source images. If he uses a bunch of textures, if he uses 20 source images, three custom brushes, that, that's what you get. So I've looked at, uh, let's see, we got pro, pro retouching up there. Well, a lot of different pro retouching. A lot of retouching, yeah. Pro special effects. And it looks like each one, come, you have a, a, a pack, a five pack, and then you have the individuals too. So you can get the five pack and maybe uh, save a little bit of money there. Uh, yeah, but it's, the, but, it's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, and the individuals are reasonably priced too. So, I mean, you're getting a lot, of, a lot for that money. And then pro uh, compositing, which those are, wow, those are fantastic. 
Yeah, I mean, they're all. Oh, uh, there it is. Best friends. If you go down to best the friends, top. yeah, I see that one. It's not the exact same image, but it's from the same series. Yeah, I've seen that one somewhere else too, uh, with him with the panda bear. Yeah. Yeah, and, they get around. And then yeah. pro uh, perfect color. So that you know, as as a ph photographer who's just getting started out, you can go over there and you can watch a lot of the, the free ones. You can then move on over to the pro ones and start making your way through there. And at the very um, bottom, there's uh, there's actually Photoshop 101, which is just going over the tools, every single tool, every single menu. If you're a true beginner, that's that's the spot to start. And oh teach yeah, you. that's got to be a long one. Yeah, uh, let's click on it and find out. Yeah, it usually says. <laughs> Three and a half hours. Three and a half hours, yeah. That would be a great one for somebody. And only 25 bucks to go in there and get, uh, is it Aaron, I imagine? Are all these Aaron? Right now, yeah, they're all Aaron. Okay. Oh, some of the photography ones, we, we've been shooting with Rob Grimm, who's a professional product, a food and beverage photographer. And so the ph photography portion of some of these is taught by a different photographer. And then in the future, we're really working on having other photographers teaching their workflow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think this would be a great one for somebody who's uh, getting in Photoshop because Photoshop is such a massive program. I don't, I don't know how you feel about your skills in Photoshop, but I think, you know, I would imagine even Aaron, who is a, uh, uh, you know, maybe as, as pro as anybody at, at Photoshop, is learns new stuff and new techniques all the time. Um, you know, it's, it's something that, especially the beginner, can be a little overwhelming, and having something like this, a video tutorial going through a lot of it, can be a real big help. Oh, it's a huge help. And, and the best thing about that tutorial is even though we're going through every single tool and going through the whole program, the, the very last part of it is we, we retouch that image. So we, we do the retouch, the facial retouching. We, I think there's a little uh, you know, liquefying, you know, uh, manipulating the model, and there's color toning and all that type of stuff. So it teaches you everything, but then at the very end, it still teaches you the application of, okay, now you know all this. Here's the source image. We're going to stylize it. You know what? You know, I just had this thought, Tim. Uh, we're going to buy, we're going to buy the, not tonight, I don't want to break up my credit card and people watch my credit card, <laughs> but after the show, I'm going to buy the Photoshop, the Pro Photoshop 101, and we're going to give it away to somebody in our Facebook group. Okay. Uh, you don't even have to buy it. You can give away all you want. Um, what's that? I'll just send it over to you. Don't, don't even worry about buying it. Well, I don't, you know, I don't want to ask a guest for something like that because we and I hadn't no. talked about it. So I'll, I'll, I'm fine with buying it. And then we'll, we'll give it away to... Um, to somebody in the in our Facebook group, and I'll, maybe I'll talk to you after the show on how I how we can do that. But I, you know, sure. we'll do that because I think that's a great product for uh, to introduce somebody to to Photoshop and to your site uh, and to what y'all do. Yeah, or you can uh, you know to all your audience just enter our contests. Um, we have contests every single week, and we have, we have no formal strategy of how we pick our winners. Sometimes <laughs> some weeks we have five. I think our, our highest week, we've had like 14 or 15 winners. We literally just go through every single submission, and if we like it, it's a winner. And every winner gets at least one free tutorial. Okay. Um, a lot of the times, we have a grand prize winner. Well, we partner with Low Pro Bags a lot, so if you enter our competitions, you usually uh, you can win a bag or something like that, or a Joby, uh, like a Gorilla Pod and stuff like that. Um, we give away tons and tons of our, our Flair tutorials. Yeah, so I mean, if you want to, if you if you don't get a chance to, to win it through your Facebook page, just enter our contest, and there's a, a good chance you'll win <laughs> at least one tutorial through us. And and Gene, Gene, we have somebody out there from England watching right now, Gina Perry, who God, it must be like uh, I'm not gonna be able to do the math here real quick, but it's got to be around two, two or three in the morning for her. So she's staying up late. She says she needs that for staying up this late. I don't know. <laughs> we're gonna have to do some kind of um, random thing there, Gina. Two o two. I was close. Mike, I got to step away for a second. Okay. Sure, sure. Uh, and I, you know, another thing you have is the behind the scenes and uh, the the videos for the behind the scenes. And I love those, yeah. but I can't find it right now. No, I found it the other day where you have uh, photos for the weekend, isn't it? We have weekend inspiration. Weekend inspiration. That's what it is. It comes um, out every single Friday. It's uh, really? Angela Butler creates it for us. Angela, is, she's great. She was our intern last summer, and she just we loved her so much. We we wanted wanted her to stay with us. She lives in. Canada, unfortunately, so she has to work remotely, but uh, she's a person that, she already lives on the internet, so it's, it's very <laughs> natural for her to, to scour the internet and find amazing images, and she's really great at it. She, uh, you know, she, she pays attention to all the major websites. Um, she, she 
is very active on Flickr and 500 picks on, on Tumblr and stuff like that. Um, and then we have our own Flickr pool and stuff like that. So every every weekend inspiration, there's qu quite a few of our fans' pictures in it too, and th they love it. We get thank you emails all the time, like, "Oh, I can't believe you put our my my image made weekend inspiration. Thank you so much." I'm like, "Well, it's a great image, you know. Thanks, thanks for being a fan. Thanks for submitting your images to our group and stuff like that." Uh, yeah, and I said I, I I was having trouble finding it again. Well, this is how easy it is. It's under the link inspiration. Yeah, <laughs> and then weekend inspiration. So it's it's really actually easy to find. Um, <laughs> maybe at the heat of the moment, I was having trouble finding it. But so so you have somebody uh, who goes out there and just scours the internet looking for the photos, and the photos are fantastic, by the way. And um, imagine she's looking on Flickr, on 500px, on Google Plus, right. yep. and all these things. Um, do you notify the winner, the not the winner, but the the person, or are they just see? Yeah, every single person she sends out an email saying, you know, your your photos being featured on on Weekend Inspiration. Here's a link to it. Thank you so much. Um, you know, there there's, you know, coming from the business side, I know there's some questionable copyright uh, <laughs> considerations when doing stuff like that. But we're a blog, and everybody <laughs> takes other people's well, images. And from what I've seen, you you're always giving credit to the photographer. Yeah, we try to give credit, but you know, the the word of the law is giving credit doesn't matter one bit. It's do you have permission or don't you have permission? And stuff well, like yeah, that. you know, I got banned from YouTube for a while for playing. I was streaming Pandora when we first went to YouTube, and I won't stay on this too long. I did what I did all the time. I did pre-show music playing Pandora, and yeah. YouTube uh, must not be like live stream. They must have algorithms that said, "Oops, you're playing um, music," and they boom, was. within minute, I got banned for a week. <laughs> But at the same time, yes. you know, we, have, we, we, we make our living from videos, and a lot of people put our pro tutorials on YouTube. Ooh. And with a matter of clicks, YouTube will take it down. I mean, they're great at getting yeah. copyright. So, you know, it's a little annoying for stuff like that, but um, I have nothing bad to say about them because they, they actually help us out quite a bit. No, and I wasn't trying to say anything bad about them. I oh, was, yeah. It was one of those things where it's like, you know, I really didn't think that through. So now, as, as boring as it is in a pre-show, I don't play pre-show music, even if we're on live stream. Um, but th this was – I would love – I have. I've never going to see one of my photos there, but that would be awesome to 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 be featured on your site with one of um, my photos. So, you know, and you do this every Friday, every single Friday. Yep. Yeah. So everybody, you know, Friday, you know what you need to go do. You got to go check out Flurn uh, for their their inspiration. You just go on the page, you um, come down to inspiration, and then weekend inspiration, and then you know there you go, and you got all the the different posts. Going That's a back. huge part of our newsletter. We send out a weekly newsletter on Friday as well, and about half of week inspiration, weekend inspiration makes it into the into the newsletter. Okay, and it looks like it's pretty easy to join your newsletter over in the right hand corner. You have where you can sign up for the the newsletter, right? Yeah, but you can sign up all over. I think it's on pretty much every single page you navigate to. You can sign yeah. up for it. Yeah. Uh, so anything about Flurn that? Um, well, one, you're in the studio right now. I am in the studio. Let me, let me flip back over to, to your video, and I'm going to give you the full video. You're in the studio right now. So we were just talking before the show, and they haven't fallen. But behind you <laughs> is some soft boxes and an octobox, and you have a unique way of stacking them or putting them up there. Yeah, we, we thought of it when we were at our, our old studio. We moved to this studio last March. Um, our last studio was quite a bit smaller, so space was, was really a... You know, something we really had to take care of and, and utilize as much as we could. Um, you know, when when I went to photography school, everybody would hang their sock. There would be a hook coming out of the wall, and then you would you know hook the softbox on it like that, and it would hang out the other way. Aaron, you know, Aaron went to design school. He he didn't go to photography school. He's a industrial designer, so he designs couches and cars and, and stuff like that. That's what he's he's trained to do. Um, so when I when I tried to get him to do that, he's like, "No, it's ugly. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I want black and I want the black side out. I don't want the white side out. I want the black side out." Well, so there's some back and forth there. It was a really funny period for us because we'd argue about the stupidest <laughs> stuff. About that. Um, so anyway, we have a, a velcro strip going across our wall, and then uh, our soft boxes they they come with velcro on it, so you can you know put in a, a grid or something. And, and take it out really easy. We have all Palsy Buff gear. We love Palsy Buff, even though you know, it has it's, it's cheaper and stuff like that. But we Alien absolutely. Bee? Is it, is it, that's the Alien Bee stuff? It's, we have a couple of Alien Bees. We use most of the Einsteins now. Okay. Um, I can't say. Their customer service is probably hands down the best I've ever experienced. And we, have, we have a lot of people touching our gear. We have a lot of people doing photo shoots here. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of interns and assistants that are touching our gear. And we break lights left and right. <laughs> And uh, Policy Buff has never charged us for a fix or a replacement or anything. Oh, that's like that. awesome. That says They're a lot. Incredible. Yeah. yeah. They're an incredible company. 
But anyway, so uh, we saw the Velcro on it, and we're like, well, we can just stick the Velcro on the softbox and stick it on the wall, and that kind of works, but they kept falling down, so we, we ended up sewing on. We busted out the sewing machine. We, we sewed on a little more Velcro, and now they just they stick and hang from the wall. Yeah, and you took one down there in the pre-show, and we were wondering, because you just walked over there, you just, you just take it down, then you just yes. stick it back up there. Uh, it, it almost looks like a magnet, you know, but it's Velcro, which is like a magnet. Um, and we've been waiting for one of them to fall, <laughs> and it happened. That so that, that, that's, that, that tells you right there, they, they, uh, they, they stay up. And, um, yeah. and to my right, your left, is the rest of the studio where y'all are doing a lot of the yeah, shooting. Been there a little bit. So I'm underneath our offices right now. We have a, a little mezzanine balcony where, where we actually do almost all our work upstairs. We're hardly, we have this huge, beautiful studio, and we're all upstairs with headphones on most of the time. <laughs> and you got a skateboard on the floor. I see that. Who... <laughs> yeah, it's actually – we have – Incredible neighbors as well. We really lucked out. They're a they're an event marketing firm. They do guerrilla marketing and stuff like that. Yeah, great company. But they actually have a, a half pipe inside. Oh mini- wow! So that's that's one of their skateboards. It's not ours. So Aaron actually, his, Aaron's foot's currently broken because he decided he wanted to learn how to skate on the ramp and you know, it didn't kill us. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> it's not broken bad. He's actually uh, walking on it fine. Okay. But yeah, I mean we have fun. Um, so you can see we have like uh, way back over there. It's just it's magazine cutouts. It looks like art, but it's just magazine clippings. It's inspiration. Okay. Um, you know, I'll make it so you can see my face still. Uh, and it's real. Actually, it's came out really helpful when we have models in studio. You know, when you're working with a model, it's you know, it's like, can you do this facial expression? Can you get your eyes like this? Can you just you know show this amount of teeth and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. It's really hard to communicate with words sometimes. So we have hundreds of pictures on the wall so we can just be like can you do that one that's, that's a great awesome. idea that's a great idea yeah. it really is and yeah it's and it's really simple to make too it's it looks great but it's incredibly simple it's just magazine no so that is a great that is uh, you know a picture says a thousand words showing somebody i want this yeah. rather than yeah that's awesome yeah, and it's great around set because we, we take inspiration from everywhere. So, you know, our hair and makeup will walk on over there and be like, well, how about we get a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Um, then we'll talk with them, like, what, what color toning do you want? Do we want to make it a little cool? Do you want greens in the shadows or anything like that? And we have examples printed, not not on a computer, and it's it's great. It's, it's very easy to convey your message to the rest of the staff or the rest of the crew that's working with you on the photo shoot, and everybody understands it better. I mean, if, if you go up to a photographer and he's like, yeah, we're going to – Add some cool tones to the shadows and make the the highlights a little warmer. Most people will be like, "What does that mean? I have no <laughs> idea what that means." Yeah. So it's very helpful. It's it's great. And then you, you you know, speaking of a photo shoot, uh, did you have more to you wanted to show? I was going to say that we got. You can hardly see it. Just shelves and shelves, bins and boxes of our lighting gear, and uh, you know, boxes of props, grids and modifiers, and clamps <laughs> and. Yeah. All that type of stuff. Awesome. Now you were talking. We appreciate you were talking about when y'all were thinking about a photo shoot, and the uh, you don't just you know slap the camera on a tripod and start firing away. There's a lot of thought that goes into the shoot on the front end. And can you tell us a little bit about that process? I mean, um, most of the work's on the front end. The photo shoot's actually usually the easy part. It's, right. it's all the planning. Um, and we're you know stay tuned because our videos are going to get a lot better about showing the the planning part and the pre-production and stuff like that. You know, it, that's in the works for our future videos. It's, we're going to be much better at showing that. Um, but yeah, pre-production, it's a lot of fun, and you know, sometimes, um, you know, we have we have daily staff meetings, and every once in a while, we'll, we'll start talking about concepts and stuff like that. Um, we'll, we'll usually let them sit in our heads for a little bit, and we'll come back to them a week later and refine them a little bit. Um, and, you know, it's a team effort, because there's so many variables that go into when you're doing a fantasy image or a heavy composite that you don't even think about, and by yourself, it's almost impossible to think about every single component that needs to go into this image. You know, if you're doing a, I don't want to give away too much because we haven't released this yet, but we just did a photo shoot. Um, it's essentially shrinking people. It's, if you've ever seen Fern Gully or the new movie mm-hmm. Epic, it's, it's yeah. very much like that. It's putting many people in, in the forest, and we had really cool costumes, and it's obviously composite and stuff like that. Uh, and people might be riding birds and, and all this cool stuff. But when, when you're thinking through that type of concept, that type of image, you know, there's so many things. It's like, well, how are people going to be interacting with their environment? How are you going to show scale? Um, you know, if somebody's just standing next to a leaf, does it look like the person's tiny or does it look like the leaf's big? What are they going to be doing? How are we going to be lighting them? What action actually makes sense? You know, are you having two people in there? Well, what's their relationship? Are they brother and sister? Are they a couple? Is it mother-daughter? Why are they even walking 
you know, it's like they're walking through the woods, but why are they walking through the woods? You know, are they gathering food? Are they walking home from a hunt? Um, there's all these little things that go into it, and you know, it's it's very much a team effort. You're like, oh, yeah, we get really excited. It's like, oh, that'd be a great idea, and then somebody else will be like, yeah, let's do this and this and this, and then and then it all starts to come together. And um, that rem that makes me think of an image I thought I saw on Aaron's site. Uh, uh, well, he hasn't edited them. I know that for a fact. So it might be an old one. Yeah, it might be an old one. I, I cannot going to find it here as we talk. But you know, um, we we didn't show Aaron's site. Do you have a photography site also, or? That, no, no, no. I, okay. I keep all my stuff personal for now. Okay. Um, well, I can't find it right now, but we'll we'll have a link to Aaron's site uh, and you know to the videos and all that stuff too later on. Uh, yeah, I would love to see that that stuff, that creative uh, thinking that goes into the shot and all that discussion on the front end. Um, so out in chat, they had a question: Where do you see? What do you see next for Flurn uh, for the next year? Where do you see you guys going? I'm sure you all thought of one year, at least one year, maybe two years down the road. Oh, yeah, where you'd one, like to go. <laughs> um, for the next year, it's uh, we've we've gotten very good at Photoshop, so our next year is getting back into photography and really, uh, you know, trying to teach photography the best we can. We've been experimenting with different ways of teaching it, and we we think we've come to the solution, or at least we know what's bad. So we're, we've kind of got the couple of things that are good. Now we're we're messing with that mix a little bit to see the, the best ways to teach photography. Um, but then it's going to be bringing in a lot more people. We, a big thing with, with Flurn, what we do is we want everybody to teach what they're best at. Um, we've always defaulted. We've always gone back to Photoshop because that's, that's really Aaron's strong suit. So when we're going to be teaching, um, you know, teaching a wedding, teaching commercial, teaching product, teaching sports, teaching concert, you know, we plan on teaching all those, but we're, we're, we're teaching fashion and stuff like that. Um, we're going to be working on bringing in professionals that do that for a living, hopefully the best of the best that are already doing it, and have them come teach with us. Because, I mean, we, we've, we've experimented with it. We've had some videos that never saw the light of day of us teaching stuff that we don't do. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's mediocre. I mean, it gets the point across, and the images are okay, the video's okay, but we really want people teaching their specialty. We want people doing this, you know, doing what they do for a living, teaching the best way to do it, not just us. I mean, we've done boudoir shoots that were just like, well, that's, that's, that's okay, but we really don't want to release it. It's not good enough, you know. And that's right. just the best. We don't want to release it. So we, we're going to bring in the best to teach what they do best. Well, going along that same line, we had another question that said, um, and this maybe is like one of those questions, what would you do if you win the lottery? What it mm -hmm. had, the question is, if you had un, an unlimited budget, what type of a sh set or a shoot would you plan? Oh, geez. <laughs> Maybe you got to think about that one for a while. That's well, like... <laughs> well, if you ask Aaron or if you ask me or if you ask anyone of our staff, anybody you ask, you're going to get a, a very different response. Exactly. Um, you know, it depends on your style. Aaron's style is very technical. He loves – I've tried to get him to do one light and two light tutorials, and every single time I try to get him to do that, we end up with six or more lights. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it, it, we could do anything. I mean – well, I don't want to uh, we're, pin you on that. Oh, it's a good lesson. What we've learned about composites is it's still always better to shoot it on location. Um, so always you know, better to do what? I missed that. To shoot on location. Oh, okay. It's, it's infinitely better to always shoot on location. You know, we we fake a lot of things. We put a lot of people in really weird spaces. But if you could actually put them in that space, it'd be so much easier. And the end image would be way better and way more believable. Yeah. Um, okay. So and I mean, we we'll spend our our budget on. I mean, it'd probably be all travel, <laughs> and we will just just go have fun somewhere. Uh, and it looks like Gina just signed up for your pro beetle. Be oh no, she's just signed up for your newsletter, and she got the pro beetle uh, beauty. Yeah, so right? if you sign up for the newsletter, you get a, a full length free pro tutorial. Yeah, very good. I didn't mention that earlier, yeah. so I have to mention that in the show notes and put a. Um, I think out on our Facebook page too that if you if you sign up for a newsletter you get is it a randomly assigned one or is, or how's that? It's always Beetle Beauty. You okay. Always get, okay. It's it's a really cool image. Um, that is a f really fun photo shoot. We actually got a lot of images out that out of that photo shoot. Yeah. Uh, so the concept. Um, do you know Rankin, the photographer? He's from Hungary, or he has he has a magazine called Hungary. Okay. He's from Europe yeah. somewhere. Rankin. And it sounds familiar. Yeah. An incredible photographer. So we we're kind of doing a, a Rankin inspired shoot, and he has he usually has bright lips, lots of bright colors. Um, so the, the the focus of that photo shoot was, was heavy makeup, really vibrant makeup. And then we were thinking about, well, what can we accent 
this makeup with, and we're like, well, let's let's put some bugs on the girl's face. Um, oh yeah, got, I was I was showing that one earlier. Yeah. Yeah, we got two really strong images out of it, but the best part about that photo shoot is we had some time to kill at the end, and our model Ashley, who's awesome, we've worked with her a couple times. If you watch our free episodes, you know who Ashley is. Um, so we had some time, and we we had our staff there. We you know we had makeup and hair there, and we had the video going and stuff like that. So it's like, well, let's keep shooting. What else do we got? What else can we do? Um, so if you look at our tutorial, light my fire. It's a girl holding a sparkler, and the sparks are, are going into her face like that. Yeah. That was just bonus time. That was after our planned shoot, and we looked around. We had sparklers from a really old shoot, and when we started playing around, and that's one of our favorite images. It's it's I'm looking at it right now. It's hanging in our studio actually. And that was just a, is a complete bonus time shoot. Yeah, and I, I was trying to find that one now, uh, and, and I'm not good on the There was a tuto- tutorial on it. It's yeah. uh, uh, well, that's okay. We don't have to find it right now. You'll, you'll find it later on. Yeah. Um, so great. So if you sign up, you get you get the and Gina's put a link out there. You get the Pro Beetle Beauty um, went out there. And I saw it earlier, and there, actually I saw I think I saw it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the blue and white one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. All right. Uh, any other questions out in chat that before we we're getting coming up on the time where we're going to have to let Chris go and we do still have to go over the uh, photo contest. We had a photo contest and uh, we have one every month and we have the September one where we're going to announce the winner tonight. So the way we the way we do them in our, our Facebook group, uh, Chris, is the, the people you, you enter during the month. It's a topic that the previous winner had cho- chosen. So it's always you know some different topic that somebody chose, and then everybody likes the the images uh, up to they can like up to five. So you don't have somebody liking every one that entered. You like up to five, and the top three then go to the admins, and the admins pick a winner uh, out of that. And we're not bound by what the people voted on. Um, it sometimes it works out to be the same, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, right. If a admin actually is one of the three then they're out of the voting they don't get the they don't get to be an admin voting but then we let a fourth person come into the group so an admin won't stop one one of the three from being in the top three so this month we actually have an admin and he's out in chat right now Seth white uh who is one of the the finalists so this month we actually have four people instead of three and we'll go over those here in a minute uh before we let chris go any any questions chris oh Chris, what was the coolest photo contest submission you've seen? Was a question. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is from somebody that submitted an image. Um, <laughs> yeah, he, well, I'm not going to tell you who he is, so you don't have to be worried about saying yeah. it's him or not. <laughs> oh, there's there's so many cool ones, and it really depends on the theme. Um, one of my favorites it was from it's from probably four months ago or something like that, and it had light coming through these trees, and it was. It was it looked like it actually probably was done with very little Photoshop, and I was just really impressed with it. As uh, I always like the images that looked like they weren't that heavily ma- manipulated, even if they were heavily. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, my personal style is is much more natural <laughs> than what we teach here. Um, so anything that looks like you know it, it's really capturing an actual scene is, is something that I I gravitate to. So what you know what is your favorite type of photography to do? Uh, landscape, people, sports. Well, you can never beat people. There's so much emotion. There's so much more interesting things in people. Right. Um, you know, all the time I talk with other friends and uh, friends of the studio and stuff like that, and they're like, well, you should plan a photo shoot. And it's just like, oh, I, I don't really plan photo shoots. I'm not a studio shooter. I don't like bringing people into the studio and stuff like that. Um, I love photojournalism. I love travel when it involves people and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I love... You know, I don't like wedding photography, but the couple times I've shot it, I actually had fun because it's so very, uh, you know, it's capturing the real moments. And that's how I got into photography was just always having my camera with me during real events, going, you know, in college, going to parties, going going out with friends, going to baseball games and stuff like that. Uh, okay. So I, I really like the natural, um, or at least real emotion type thing. Not not, I haven't been so drawn to fashion and stuff like that because it's just kind of like, oh, well, you're, you're faking smiling, you're faking emotion and stuff like that. So it's always been the, anything that has actual real emotion in it is what I'm really drawn to. All right, so along that same line, and um, better yet, what is a theme for a contest you'd really like to see? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've gone through We actually sit down about once every two months, the whole team together. We all have little strips of paper. If you watch our contest, you know we, we draw the contest out of a, 
out of a lens mug, actually, with little strips of paper that have the themes on it. So we sit down. So I've probably written 50 contest themes. <laughs> Any one that's your favorite or stands out? I, I, again, it's the same. I like the simple ones. We've had a lot of comp, like, um, composite ones. More, more involved contests, but it's like we had one. We actually had a really big contest. It was probably a year ago, and we had a lot of prizes. I think we had like $1,000 in prizes for this one contest. And But the theme was anything but smiling. And I just love that one. You could not smile. It was anything. It had to have a person in it, but they could not be smiling. I think that was one of my favorite contests I ever huh. did the entries to. Yeah. That, and that, you know, I guess you can go through all the other emotions that could be there. Yeah, there's so, I mean, a lot of, it's a lot of blank faces. It's a lot of distress. There's kids crying. Um, there's... The really impressive ones were people that still showed a lot of joy without smiling. Mm -hmm. it's, oh, that'd be interesting. And, and I'd like to mention, if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, so we do have some people watching us on YouTube because of, of the, we're broadcasting uh, on, on air. You know, the show with the, with the chat and all that is over on jpegdeross.com slash live. So you want to go over there to actually see it. So when we show web pages and all that, you, you see it over there. Uh, and I did find that, that one with the sparklers where it's blowing in her face, the yeah. uh, light my fire. Uh, my fire. You know how I found I just used the search. It was really easy when I used the search. Yeah. <laughs> for reason. So cool story about that. So um, you can see a spark hitting her cheek right there. Mm -hmm. So first off, before we had the model hold a spark, we, had, we actually, it is a sparkler. There is a fan blowing sparks into her face. It's actually not that much Photoshop. Um, before we did that, we did it on ourselves. We didn't make our model just jump in and hold a sparkler in front of her face and get it blown on her. Um, you know, we tested ourselves first to make sure it, it didn't hurt. Um, but the spark that hits right below her eye, her eye was open for that image. And we were looking at it in the back of the camera. We're like, that is so cool. This is incredible. <laughs> but we are, you are closing your eyes the rest of the photo shoot when we were photoshopping your eyes open after this. <laughs> that is an incredible spark. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, you, you, because there's eyes open in this, like, holy crap. Yeah. You, you know, you guys, when you tested it, you had your eyes closed, right? You obviously did oh, not. Well, we got pretty lucky. I, I, I feel it's one of those things where we really shouldn't have done it, but it, yeah. it worked out for us. So as the business side of the, the, the business there, Chris, I'm sure you guys have insurance. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, it's it's and these things happen really fast. It's the flow of the photo shoot, and we have great communication with our models. We never make our models do anything they don't want to do. Yeah, a lot of times they're standing on fire escapes, or they have fire blowing in their face, or we have leaf blowers and fans all over. There's there's fire. Um, there's all these strange things, and if it's anything somewhat abnormal, we always test it ourselves with them. There, like we will do this first. We we. And we'll ask them a bunch of times, you know, are you comfortable with this? Do you want to do this? I mean, if it's something more of a conceptual nature or something a little more extreme for the model, the model is always heavily involved mm -hmm. in uh, the planning stage. We're, we don't expect them to show up and just be like, oh, go jump in fire or something like that. You know, it's... <laughs> well, and speaking of fire, the one that's at the top of your page right now is the Human Torch. The Human Torch, which is fun. We actually... That's, that's a really fun day. That's, that's Asa. Asa is doing all our new video. He's our video guy. Uh, he's an incredible person. Um, so we planned this photo shoot. It was three photo shoots one night. We had three new employees, and everybody got a new profile picture. They're not on our about page yet, but the, the concept of the whole photo shoot was our three new employees get their about page picture. They get to pick whatever we want, and we get to shoot it. And he, uh, Asa loves comics, and it's, it's the Flaming Torch. He wanted to do it, and it was, it was a lot of fun. And that, mm -hmm. that whole day was fun. It's, it's a little series, Meet the Family, where you kind of meet all the new employees, and then you know, learn a little bit about their photo shoots and, and what inspired them. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's cool, too. Um, and, and he's he's not on the on the meet, on the the meet team page. Not yet. We've, had, we've, we've done all that. We've edited all our images, but we're having a slow time actually getting the bios from them and then making the web pages. So, so they're not up on the about page yet, but... Nobody likes to write. Part. We did the fun part. We did the image part. Now we just have to do the, the rest of it. And, you know, I understand why I hate doing the... I hate doing the show notes. I hate doing the writing. I yeah. love doing this part of it. I hate doing the writing. Um, to, you're saying out in chat, test it on a woman first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Chris, it's, it's, we're at the hour now, and I promise you we keep you at the hour. So I, I really appreciate you coming out. And guys out in chat, hang out a little bit longer because we are going we still need to do the contest of who's going to who won. And I will, over the next, I don't know exactly when it's going to be, I'll buy it soon. 
but over the next week or so, we'll figure out a way to pick a winner in our Facebook group uh, on who's going to get the the Photoshop um, lesson Photoshop from them. Photoshop 101. Yeah, Photoshop 101. Uh, Chris, again, thank you for coming out, and you're welcome to hang around, but I know you, you're a busy guy running everything, so uh, if you want to head out, that's fine, too. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Um, yeah, I, have to go, you, I just have to go yell at my dog some more. Okay. okay. <laughs> the, the cool part about our studio is that I get to bring my dog to work every day, and our, our work neighbors, who I mentioned earlier, they now have four dogs and a baby that come to work every single day. <laughs> and it's great. Our, our staff loves it. You know, we try to set our mood here um, really happy, really positive, and really, really fun. Yeah. But also, yeah, that's auditor. something you couldn't have done when you're an auditor. No, no, <laughs> no. So much, so much better. I'm, I'm, uh, I wish you guys all the luck and and Thank hope you. to see y'all keep growing and we'll we'll stay in touch and uh, we'd you know somewhere down the road we'd love to have you have you back on the show again to go. I'd love thing. to be back. It was fun. A okay. lot of fun. Thank you, Chris. Well, thanks, Chris. Bye, guys. Bye. Good night. All right. So now let's we're going to go over uh, the. The photos on, and guys, thank you for coming out there. We're going to go over who were the finalists in the uh, September contest. Would you lose? There we go. We had a slight pause on the program as oh, this yeah. jumped out. So let me bring the, do this. All right, everything should be back on track now. There we go. Yeah, slight freeze. We're back on track. Okay, so we had four finalists this month because Seth White, and the way the rules work are if a, and I mentioned this earlier, if an admin is one of the top three, then the, um, we add in a fourth person. Whoever was number four, whoever is knocked out of the top three by the admin they come back in too. Uh, I'm not going to tell you who that was because it really doesn't matter. When you when you come into the final voting with the admins, first, second, third, fourth place doesn't matter anymore because the admins are going to review them and, and make their own comments on it. Um, and so, you know, this this month, Cess was one of the ones that was in the top three. Cess was banned from voting, so Cess has no idea who the um, you know who who won or who got what votes and all that kind of stuff. But Cess was one of the top three, and I'm looking for where our comments were. Here we go on those. Another one was let me change this. Nick Williams. Cess had the car. Uh, oh, the topic of course was reflection. Cess had the car. Nick Williams had the bug. Christina Harrison had the gazebo, and Dusty Hubble, who that name sounds familiar. She's been in the finals before. Had the bubble. Um, so so many comments. Let's we'll go back to the bubble. Let's go back to Cess. Go back to Cess. Um, comments on Cess was everybody hated it. Was no good. No, just kidding. absolutely. Just, Once we just did it with Cess, it was over. <laughs> just kidding, Cess. Couldn't vote um, for fifth. <laughs> for me, and I'll say what what I thought. Tim, you can say what what you thought. Uh, for me, I love the framing of this one. I love the color of it. Uh, I'm, I think he did some retouching on the color of this one. And the reflection of the light in the bumper. I mean, you got the reflection there. It wasn't the overall theme of the image. But, you know, like in all, all of these, you don't have – you interpret the, the subject your own way. Well, see, and then I thought about it afterwards, Mike, and I think – the reflection on this is reflecting back on an old car versus the reflection of actual reflection is what we're thinking. And maybe Cess can elaborate on that a little bit, but uh, maybe that's what he was thinking. Oh, you went reflecting deep. on an old car. You went deep. Well, maybe he did. No, no, no. You, well, I, as I'm looking at it now, I'm like, you know, this is reflecting on an old car. Maybe it's something that he had when he was a kid. Okay, so... I don't know if Seth did it or not, but you just went deep. That's pretty good, yeah, Tim. Yeah, I really did, yes. Well, I'm going to have to start thinking deeper like that than you. Um, I don't know if he did that or not, but uh, that was, you know, some of the comments there. That's a great comment by, by Tim just there, the reflection on an old car. Uh, okay, the bug. You know, some people were, I don't think bugs, any of the, Bugs freak me out. <laughs> none of the, as far as I remember, none of the admins had any comment on the bug freaking about. I'm not a big fan of bugs, but this is more like a fly or something. Um, everybody loved the composition, loved the, 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 you know, the, the of course, the reflection, loved the, the sh very shallow depth of field. I think the depth of field may be a, a, a tad too shallow because the bug itself seemed like it was a little bit out of focus 
on this one. But overall, I, you know, I, I love these macro shots like this. Any? I agree. I agree with that. I mean, I, I like personally. I like the depth of field of it, and it, it's got the uh, the upper part of the body is what's in focus. I think the tail is kind of out, but the color of the eyes is just great. Even though bugs just, I know they make my wife jump, and when she jumps, it causes me to jump. Well, the cha I, the challenge always with a macro is you have a incredibly shallow depth of field. I mean, you measure in depth of field in in millimeters. Um, so that yeah, it could be, you know, here, unless you do some kind of focus stacking, it's going to be difficult to get the whole bug in, in focus. But you can, I love that shallow depth of field. And you can see it when you look at it, that thin line. Uh, and this is a good example, too, if you ever want to know about depth of field, how it works. You can see that thin line of focus, how right. it's more like a fence in front of you that the focus is, is. And that's how if you have somebody's face is at an angle, how one eye is in focus and the other one's not. Yeah, that's a good example. And the next one uh, was from Castina, and this was the gazebo. And I would like to mention, I, 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 I'm thinking that every image, just, just about every image, had a first place vote by one of the admins, so, which, is, which is good. Again, not the admins didn't agree. <laughs> we can't agree. <laughs> we can't agree, which is good. Uh, so, some of the comments on this one was, this was you know, people were saying that this is the one image that truly took the term reflection. Um, and, and, and use the reflection in the image at the, the main point of the image is the reflection. So there's, there are comments there. Um, for me, I didn't like that the top of the, the gazebo was cut off. It's there in the reflection, but not in the main image. See, and that, that didn't bother me as much. and Because uh, I, I was looking more at the reflection in the water as opposed to the actual subject. Yeah, and yeah, I, I guess, you know, in retrospect, I guess the top of the image being cut off could be a little distracting. Yeah, I do like the reflection in the water. You know, there's still water. You can see all that. So uh, it, it really took the theme to heart and, and, you know, did a good job with that. The last one was the bubble. And I don't know if I'm I maybe cutting off a little bit of it with the, the title down there. Um, there it comes up on the, sh on the shot. This is another, I guess this was a macro shot. Uh, I'm not, I couldn't quite make out what the ref, it was a reflection of, but I really like this shot for me personally. And it could be used, it could have been used for um, some other shot other than just the macro, I mean, the, um, the reflection entry. I like the framing of it uh, the, and just the mood, the mood I felt with this image. Right. I, the only thing I thought was the colors were a little bit too muted for me. Almost a sepia tone, I think, was uh, what got me is... Well, that's what kind of created the mood for me. Let's see, different, you uh, yeah, I mean, that's why, that's why this is an art, not a science. I mean, you could exactly. have had it brighter and all that, but that would have lost the mood that I had with it. So all that said, uh, you know, the admins voted, and this, the admins are Gina Perry, who's out there in chat right now, uh, Nikki, who couldn't make it tonight, Tim, and myself. And Cess was not part Dang. of the voting. Didn't, doesn't even know who voted uh, or who, who voted for what. So the winner this month is do we have a drum roll this time oh yeah i knew you're gonna say it I, hold on gotta find my drum roll i'll get the fanfare afterwards <laughs> okay uh the winner this month is nick williams with the bug shot yay Where? yay congratulations nick <laughs> nick will win a 25 dollar amazon.com gift certificate a gift card, whatever, gift, however that works, and be the photo on the top of the page and of the Facebook group. And he will also be able to choose the November contest. The October contest is was chosen by um, Jeannie, who I think is over in in London, in uh, England right now, visiting Gina. Sleeping, yeah, sleeping. sleeping. And she. So the the topic for October is self portrait. And using the rule of thirds. Rule of thirds. That's so, going to be a hard one because I hate putting myself in a picture. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Let me get us back up there. So be thinking about what you're going to do there. And, and Gina Perry says that Gina is, is snoring. snoring. <laughs> yeah, snoring. <laughs> so, and, and I'd like to mention, you know, we mentioned that you win the $25 Amazon gifts card. Uh, gifts, whatever that is. What is that? Yeah, gift card. Yeah, gift card. Um, and we make those... those 
funds are available by our listeners going out to Amazon using the, the, Am the JPEG to Raw link, either on our site or using the Amazon.jpeg.com link. And go in there every time you go to Amazon to buy anything. It doesn't have to be photo photography related. It could be shoes or it could be a cell phone or it could be, you know, lotion or something like that. Uh, going out there and, and using our link, those funds are used to do things like we're going to buy this thing from Flurn and uh, the monthly contest. And as long as we have the funds to do it, we'll keep doing that. And if we get more funds, we'll just do bigger things. You know, maybe someday the, 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 the gift card moves from $25 up to $50. Who knows? It all depends on how much money we we get from that. We have had we are having a good month this month, Tim. Somebody bought a camera. Oh, uh, that's a good one. So we got a good we got a good uh, amount from there. It makes up for the last three or four months where we've been under the number, uh, under twenty five dollars. So it doesn't add anything to your co to your cost when you do that. It just gives us a small credit. We also have a link with Topaz Labs where you can use that, which is topazlabs.jpeg.raw.com, or just go to our site. Those links are all at the top. If you uh, couldn't make the show tonight and you want to to um, get the recorded version or if you want to get the recorded version go back and listen to in it because you came in late you know we're out on itunes on stitcher radio on youtube on tivo on blackberry on zoom <laughs> you, you name it we're there uh if we aren't in good night gina perry if we're not um at a place where you want us just let us know and we'll move over there we'll get, try to get on there um I mentioned uh, YouTube, and you know, a while back we were, we were struggling to get to a thousand because we needed a thousand subscribers to live stream through YouTube. And I was asking everybody, help us, help us, help us. And then when we got up to about three, some, 300 or so, YouTube changed the rules and you only needed a hundred. So bam, we were past it. Well, the numbers have been flying since then, and I get messages from people who are listening to shows that are way back. And they say, hey, I just subscribed, you know, trying to help you out. I hope you get to 1,000 soon. So later they'll find out, hey, you know, thank you. Uh, and I sent them a message, you know, saying thank you. But we're already, you know, we're already there. But we, Tim, you know, um, I like to have contests where the other person doesn't know they're in a contest. <laughs> it, makes, <laughs> it, makes it, it makes it easier to win. So Jim, Jim Collison, who is our, um, a friend of ours who does another podcast, a tech podcast, he does know that we're in a competition, and we're crushing him. Annihilating is a better word. Okay, annihilating. When, it, when the contest started, he was 20-something ahead of us. And it's too bad he's not out there in chat. He was 20-something ahead of us. He is now, uh, we're now more than double him. We've gone, we're now at over 800 on, uh, subscribers on YouTube. And we're within 30 subscribers of the Home Server Show. So we'll pass them soon. Yeah, we'll beat them to a thousand, and that's all because of you guys out there that you you've helped us out and and subscribed to it, <clears throat> and because of our great guests like tonight with Chris and over at, at Flurn, and hopefully someday we can get Aaron to come on too. And we're getting close to a thousand on Facebook as well. Yep, we are getting to close to a thousand people in our Facebook group. Uh, next next week, Tim. So if you go out to uh, our website, and I know a lot of people don't go do this, but every time I book somebody, I book them on the calendar, and I'm gonna. Pull up the calendar here. There, if you go to the website, there's a um, a link on the website. Uh, if I can bring it up, called Calendar. And that brings you to our calendar. It brings you to our forums. Um, but if you go to the calendar, every time I book somebody, I immediately put it out on the website. I generally post about it too, but I put it on the website so you can look ahead and see. Next week, we have Abe Robinson from Blind Seven Photography. Totally different than anything we've ever done. Abe is going to be a totally different um, guest than we've ever had before. We may have, we had a little bit of audio issues when we did the pre-show last night. I'm going to have to see how we work that out. But I, I want you all to be prepared for Abe being somebody totally different, which is what we want. We want to bring in, we don't want to do the same you know, wedding photographer every week. We want to do something different. So Abe is going to be somebody different. Uh, he sent me a bunch of photos I can, uh, to use for next week's show. Some of them I cannot use and still keep a G, uh, <laughs> still keep a YouTube and a uh, iTunes account. So I told them I had to tell them last night I can't use all of these. <laughs> but thank you for sending them. Don't <laughs> don't tell my wife. <laughs> um, so Abe should be a lot of fun, and you guys will will uh, hopefully you guys will love him. And I need to get Jeff Wick Wickliffe. 
let him know that he's coming because he will love that. And the week after, we have Cosman Danella. I'm going to have to know how to say his name. Coming, he is a wedding photographer, but a different wedding than we've ever seen before. So just uh, two great guests back to back. And then in November, we have Michael Blinsky coming back. If you remember Michael Blinsky, he came yes, on. He was the storm photographer from Arizona. Yes. Well, he just came back from a trip from Africa where he's going to share his, his experience in his trip to Africa. So that should be a, a, a great um, a great show there with, with Mike. And then the week after that, we have Zach Perez, come, Perez coming on. He's going to be talking more about the business side of photography. Uh, that should be another great show. Then it's Thanksgiving week. We'll take that time off. Uh, if you remember Mark Johnson, who came on and talked about the cinematography, we've booked, right, 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 we've right. booked, booked him again. He's coming back in January. He would have come back sooner, but he his house was uh, severely damaged from um, the storms out in, in Boulder, Colorado. Remember all that rain they had oh, out there? Oh, really? Yeah, like the whole, whole lower half of his, his house was damaged. So he's having to do a lot of work to get his, his house back up and running, and he said, I really need until um, January to do that. So he won't be back until January. We're trying to get him to come back sooner than that, but definitely understand with, with that damage. And we, we really hope that all that works out well for him and he um, is able to get everything repaired and, and everything covered by insurance, hopefully. So we got we got a lot of people coming. We got more that we're working on. Um, we're, I think we're getting back. We had a little bit of... Had a little bit of struggle there as I'm coming back out, you know, coming back off the um, injured reserve, let's say that. <laughs> <laughs> and now that I'm, I'm back full speed and the hair is starting to grow back too, um, I think we're back on track and we're booking guests again. So stick with us and we'll, we'll keep getting more and more great guests like tonight. With that, let's go ahead and end the live show. Tim, thank you for coming. Everybody out in chat, thank you for coming. Good and night, everybody. Congratulations to Nick Williams. We'll see you next week. Uh, until then, keep it raw. Good night. Good night.